stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm joined by Nina Mishra to discuss how we find our investing ideas. Nina is... What like the director of re- ETF, ETF research. research? Why do yeah. I I never get that right? Even though I've <laughs> said it like fine. a gazillion times, <laughs> she's on the ETF side. I'm on the stock side. We're going to discuss how we find those ideas or some of our ideas at least through newspapers and magazines. Because I've been getting some tweets lately from people asking, you know, what kind of books they should be reading, where can they find ideas. And sure. I'm gonna cover books in a different episode. Mm-hmm. But I I feel like newspapers and magazines, yes, you can read them online. They don't have yes. to be in paper versions. Uh, that those two areas are a good source of where I get a lot of my ideas. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to discuss it. And let's start with the newspapers because those kind of get overlooked, I feel. Sure. Now, the first one everybody would be reading or looking at is the Wall Street Journal. And I think people should read that mm-hmm. newspaper. It's an excellent newspaper, but everybody's reading it. So if I want some ideas, everybody else is going to have those ideas too, I feel. But what do you think about that? So Wall Street Journal is very important if you are in the market. It yeah. It's all the economic news, political news, market news. Uh, so for people like us who are watching the market every day, every hour, Wall Street Journal is, of course, a must. Yeah. So, and uh, some people think that uh, maybe the subscription is very expensive, but they get they have promotions very frequently. They do. Yeah. And if you are a student, you can get it at a discounted rate. That's so, a good idea. Yes. Yeah, so those yeah. uh, those way you can and and of course they have some free uh, articles every month, uh, but if you want to read about a company's results, conference calls, latest developments, then of course Wall Street Journal is a must. But as you said, yeah. it's very popular; everyone reads it. So right. maybe you are not getting very you know very innovative ideas from the Wall Street Journal. Right, you're getting much more kind of the reactive type of ideas. Exactly. Exactly. At exactly. that mm-hmm. that source. Okay, what about some of our other, one of our other favorite ones, it turns out you and I both think this is like one of the best newspapers, is the Financial Times. It's kind yes. of a secret. Yes. Uh, so Financial tra- Times is great for thematic ideas. Yeah. So if, if I want to research what's happening in the field of robotics, artificial intelligence, space or fintech, uh, I go to FT. Yeah. And another area where FT is very good, I found, is their coverage of international economies. So, for example, what was happening in Turkey and Argentina, um, the, the economic crisis in those countries. And if you want to learn about what's happening in monetary policy in Russia or in India. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's a place I, to go. Yeah, I go to FT. And one of the reasons I think is uh, FT probably probably has only one version. I'm not 100% sure about that. Whereas the Wall Street Journal has several versions. So it has right. a U.S. version. Then and it has Asia. Then many international versions. Yeah. It has China, India, Japan, oh. Europe. So probably... Indians, yeah. Indian affairs are covered more in the Indian version and the Chinese, what's happening in China is covered more in the Chinese version. Yeah. But in FT, you can get a very good, very detailed, uh, you know, um, update of what's happening in, in 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 those countries. So if I want to research my international ETFs, I usually go to FT. Uh, now, I was... <laughs> Our producer just raised his hand and we were like, are we halting? Is something happening? No. <laughs> we are fine. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so, so ex- yeah. So ETFs, I feel like because mm-hmm. they do cover the international scene so well that you might get a lot of good like international type of ETF ideas off of EFT. Yes. Uh, so, for example, when I was looking at uh, a fintech ETF. Uh, I F- FT was my source, okay. and I learned about what is happening in China and India in the areas of fintech. Uh, you know, the people are using apps like Alipay and Paytm in India. So there's a 
payment revolution uh, in those countries. And in fact, in terms of fintech, China and India are probably ahead in terms of you yeah, know, number sure. number of users than many other developed countries. Uh, and uh, so that is why uh, in terms of at least fintech, those countries are ahead. So they have gone from cash directly to digital payments, whereas we went from cash to credit cards, and now we are switching to digital payments. Then similarly, uh, in the area of robotics, when I was researching, I learned some cool things, like there was a, a robotic uh, hotel in Japan that was the first ro entirely robot stuff. Wow. <laughs> what now, what, what was cool about that is that uh, uh, after reading that, I realized, okay, our jobs are not going to be taken away anytime soon because uh, they had a staff of about 200 plus robots and they had to fire half the robots because they were not working properly. What? <laughs> even, the, so, even the robots didn't work yeah, out? Wow. What happened, one of the guests complained that his digital assistant was bothering him at night oh. and ask him, asking him to repeat his request so then they later analyzed and they found that maybe because he was snoring so oh, the robot no. the robot could not understand whether he's making a, a, request, a request yeah or he's just so just he, making some noises yeah. so they had to fire, <laughs> fire the robots and now it is uh, it has some human stuff okay. as well uh, similarly when i was researching the space ctf there was a new launch recently the ticker the ticker is really cool ufo uh, oh. so of course uh, I, uh, space, you know, uh, it always captures your imagination and I read about space, but uh, I did not know so much about the space economy and F FT had very good articles and some special uh, issues on the space economy, what is happening in terms of space travel, uh, what is Richard Branson's company doing and Elon Musk's SpaceX and uh, Blue Origin by Jeff Bezos, what all, what all those companies are doing. Uh, there's, there's another Japanese company, a startup, which has developed a technology to create meteors on demand. Uh, but all those are, uh, you know, privately held companies, but they are partnering with public companies in the space. So there were some cool things about the space economy, and that probably convinced me about, uh, you know, the uh, probably the ETF is a good idea. It would do well in the longer term. What's the um, robotics ETF ticker? Uh, the ticker, the cheapest one is by iShares. The ticker is IRBO. Uh, they are more by more ETFs by uh, GlobalX and RoboGlobal. Those tickers are ROBO and BOTZ, Robo and Bots. Okay. And what about the FinTech one? Because I really like that area. F-I-N-X, so. -I FinTech. Oh, X as in exit. X, X, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <if> I, <laughs> X is. <laughs> uh, fin, fin X. And yes. that's a global one? It has a lot of global exposure. So okay. all these thematic ETS, because they are based on global growth stories, yeah. uh, not just uh, uh, confined to the U.S. So they are uh, they usually have about at least 30, 40, 50 percent international exposure. And uh, probably for thematic ETFs, uh, uh, for thematic, you know, investing ETFs are a good vehicle because otherwise you'll have to go out and buy international stocks, which is not easy, or maybe restrict yourself to the ADRs which are traded right, here. Right, right. So in the ETF wrapper, you can get a lot of international exposure easily and at a cheap cost. Yeah, that's why I like them. Okay, I'm going to take a look at some of those. Now, Financial Times is... Is that in Singapore? Where are they located? London, I, I believe they it's are in London. London? Yeah. Oh, yeah. why did I think they were in Singapore? They probably have an office there, though. They might have an office. Yeah, in, but I, uh, they they are British. Uh, so okay. And, uh, uh, in fact, uh, because uh, I'm reading about the Indian elections now, so there was a good article in the FT recently about how WhatsApp is being used, yeah. not only by, you know, people in spreading all the political, you know, messages and everything. It is actually being used by political parties also, especially the ruling party, Modi's party, BJP, is using WhatsApp for spreading their political agenda. And WhatsApp now has 300 million users in wow. India. It is the uh, biggest, single biggest country for WhatsApp. So that probably convinced me about Facebook's 
outlook in the longer term because right. Zuckerberg is also talking about moving away from the public platform to more private messaging yeah. and private payment system so obviously if they are able to you know control the spread of misinformation and fake stories on these platforms then probably this has excellent growth potential in countries like India Brazil yeah. where where it is being used by a lot of people as a cheap form for communications is facebook included in like a fintech etf usually because of whatsapp uh if i'm not sure if well, it is not yet, yeah because i'm not sure if uh, facebook really... has and if it would have it would have probably have a very little yeah. exposure and because they they're... have not monetized right. whatsapp right we've now we've talked about that yeah. about how they are trying to yes to do payments through it at least in india yes for this reason because it's so popular there right 300 million yeah. users we're and still have, waiting to it's find a very out. powerful platform yeah. for uh, for sure okay so that's something to watch there too in the fintech space people don't consider facebook to be like fintech necessarily yes and uh, uh, like other newspapers uh ft also has some free articles it does but F i always reach my limit quickly. yes <laughs> and they, then i curse it i'm like dang <laughs> it i reached the limit <laughs> yes uh, uh, i do get promotions at times from okay. ft directly or through my american express card also okay. i have gotten so i have subscribed wow, whenever nice yeah. whenever i get some any promotion because ft is definitely a good newspaper it's slightly expensive yeah. And they don't have as many promotions as what does I that think. mean? What is slightly expensive? I haven't looked lately. Do we know? Like, oh, I don't remember off I the top either. of my head. Uh, I mean, some of them you are talking, you know, several hundred dollars a year to yeah. get some of these yes. newspapers. The Wall Street Journal is definitely cheaper. Than yeah, that that I know. FT is okay. one of the expensive ones, but they all it have. It is worth it. Uh, they all have some free stories, and you yeah. can sign up for alerts. So, for example, if you are interested in the space economy, you can sign up for alerts. So, whenever they publish an article. Oh, on that nice. topic you will yeah. get a message and then you can read your make use of your free article for right. <laughs> for, for the story that you like yeah. uh, uh, and uh, as far as uh, stocks is concerned I, I think new york times also has good coverage in their sunday version they, i like it that, does the business the, section the, the deal Even, book is yes, pretty good yes uh, especially for uh, the coverage of ipos i think uh, New York Times had very good coverage yeah. in their deal book section. I agree. Yes, especially if you can only, um, you know, read like one a week, the Sunday is, Sunday New York Times is what yes. would be the best for finding like investment ideas right. in there. The, so, even the technology section is very yeah. good. The personal technology section is pretty good. Yeah. Now, what about Barron's? It's kind of a newspaper slash magazine, mm -hmm. I guess, because mm -hmm. it is once a week. Um, but it's printed on like newspaper type paper. So that's why I was kind of lumping in with the newspapers. But I've gotten plenty of investment ideas out of Barron's yeah. over the years. Yeah, I subscribed to Barron's very recently. Okay. So I cannot talk about stock ideas, but they have very good coverage on stocks that I know yeah. and that I've seen. They always have like these good lists. Mm -hmm. And even I just... I've been getting a couple, I've gone to the bookstore and bought them mm -hmm. off the rack, so to speak. And they had one recently that was just on small cap stocks. And it gives you, they talk to the manager of the fund and then it gives you like a list of like what the biggest holdings are in there. But you always get some like good ideas yes. off of that. Yeah, sure. Especially mm -hmm. in these kind of more obscure areas. One of the ones on here that I like a lot and so I wasn't surprised that she owns it is five below, which is F I V E. It's kind of like the secret retailer that where everything's $5 and below, I guess, yeah, yeah. but a lot of teens, they focus mm -hmm. on teens and tweens and they love it. And there's like 750 of these stores now. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize. I did not realize that they, they would have so one. many. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've seen one, but I have never me too. Been, been in one. I know, but I need to go to one apparently because this is like one of the hottest retailers out there, but that was in that list. So yeah, again, I feel like Barron's, a lot of people get it. So obviously everybody's exposed to these same names on here, but it gives you some ideas, especially if you want to put them on your list to kind of monitor and see where they go or how they do in an earning season and that kind of thing. So sure. Barron's is pretty good. Okay. So let's switch over to the regular magazines. Yes. Some of us still read these. Now I'm 
been a long-term subscriber to Business Week back in the day. Business Week actually before the internet, yes, that was a long time ago, but before that really dominated um, on the news, people actually used to try to trade off of the Business Week issue. They Mm -hmm. would like try to get it out of the mail early, like at its distribution. There was like scandals about this because they would trade, they would, you know, front run the stocks that were listed in there, the companies that they covered because people would trade them. Now it's less so, obviously, because things just come online and you can't like time it the same way. But it's not owned by Bloomberg. They bought it out uh, numerous years ago. But the magazine has basically stayed the same with its real business focus. And um, now they have deeper pockets, too, I feel. So they, too, have really good international coverage, which you don't see a lot of times in magazines, especially. Mm -hmm. And so they had a whole cover story on Amazon in India that was really good. And then just a recent issue, this really isn't international, so to speak, but they had a whole um, story of Microsoft and its big comeback. <laughs> like, mm-hmm, you know, it's mm-hmm. been a while since so it's been sure. down on its luck, but it's back now. But even if you read like the interior articles, there's always these like interesting ones that they cover because they have the deep bench with so many great reporters over there. And one of them, I knew of this company because we've covered it here many times and it's one of the bigger healthcare companies but intuitive surgical was kind of highlighted in there okay. uh, a number of months ago that mm-hmm. ticker is isrg and they make those da vinci surgical systems that are like transforming medicine really where the computer is like doing the operation and the article is like really fascinating about they talked with the ceo and like the future of medicine and it was kind of a combination of healthcare plus the technology side mm-hmm. so i knew of intuitive i knew why the stock was already soaring and that you know how good they were doing with revenue growth but until i read it and realized hey this has even a longer runway i feel like that's what you can get out of either newspapers or magazines like it suddenly like a light bulb goes off Mm -hmm. and you're more aware of what the company actually does than just reading you know their website or listening to some conference calls because the reporters are like drilling down into more of the you know details of what these companies do and like their growth prospects and all of that so you can get some good ideas. Again, like sure. everybody can read Bloomberg Business Week and it's out there, but sometimes you have to like pick out the ideas. Like they don't, that one was kind of sitting there facing you, I feel. But sometimes you can be reading like a random magazine. Like I like Wired Magazine for a lot of their tech articles, mm-hmm. get some good ideas about like up and coming technologies out of reading Wired. And then. Um, One that just happened recently, I get Eating Well magazine. It's a food (laughs) magazine. used to be Cooking Light, and then there was also Eating Well. They're only like six issues a year or something. And they go a little bit more in-depth. They do have recipes and things, but they go more into certain topics in food. So they had one uh, last year on peanut allergies. Mm -hmm. And so I got some interesting ideas off of that one. But just recently, they had a whole article on the healthiest store-bought veggie burgers. And so as you're reading this article, you know, yeah, people might just be reading it for the healthy aspect, but this is like a popular thing eating yeah, now. Beyond, Beyond Meat has yes, done so well. Right. So and did they talk about impossible burgers in that article? Yes. Well, here's like one of the pictures. Beyond uh-huh. Meat <laughs> is on the list because uh-huh. you can buy this at the Whole Foods and make your yeah. own your own burgers off of that. So if you were thinking like, oh, this is a hot area, a lot of people are going to want to eat these veggie burgers, which are the best ones. And like, you know, which actually tastes good. This burger on here looks pretty that good, looks I good, have to yes. say. Um, then you would be reading this article and I immediately was like, oh, you know, where could you invest in these? And then lo and behold, Beyond Meat just went IPO and right. now it's crazy. That ticker is BYND if you already didn't know. But they're on this list. And then they had a couple of others that I wasn't that familiar with. So, but I knew this one, Morningstar Farms has one. And I was like, oh. Those I have tried and they're very good. Okay. And I was like. black bean burger, the chickpea burger. Okay. They're all very good. So there's testimony right there. Yeah. But I didn't know who makes this because I know Morningstar Farms, they do a lot of various uh, plant-based foods. 
And I had to look it up and Kellogg's actually owns Morningstar wow. Farms. So mm-hmm. that's an idea. If yeah. you were thinking like, how can I get in this space without spending like a gazillion dollars for Beyond Meat? Um, so Kellogg, ticker K, is that one. And then I looked up a few of these other ones. There's Amy's All American Veggie Burgers on this list, but that's a private label. So you can't buy that one. And then Impossible Burger is on here and they're also private for now, but they're going to be making the burgers for Burger King, which they tested in St. Louis. I guess it was, it blew it out of the ballpark for the Whopper, the veggie Whopper in St. Louis. And they're rolling it out by the end of the year to all of their restaurants in the U S as long as they can make enough of it, apparently (laughs) they're going to be kind of tight on the supply. Um, But That's a way possibly if you think Burger King is going to get like a big boost off of this, you might want to like look into maybe buying the Burger King stock instead of Impossible Burger, which you can't buy. I don't know. That's kind of a roundabout way of investing in some of these trendy things, but it's a way at least that's what these magazines are for, like to you're reading it to get some ideas. Sure. Uh, as far as magazines are concerned, uh, I like to read The Economist. Okay. And That's a good Econ- one. And The Economist also has very good coverage of whatever is Super happening. Super good. Bullet, political, yes. monetary policies, uh, economics. economics. yeah. And uh, uh, for uh, researching about uh, recently launched 5G ETF, the ticker is FIVG. <laughs> Easy to remember. FIVG. Uh, yes. Okay. So I, I found very good material in The Economist, I learned that there is actually an international body which sets the standards for uh, 5G, that it has to have this kind of speed, this kind of late in time, this kind of so many devices have to be connected in a particular area, huh. then only they, it is called 5G. And uh, I also learned about the global race for 5G. So U.S. wants to be a leader, but countries in Asia, especially China, Japan, uh, South Korea, because they missed probably the earlier 4G and 3G race. They were not ahead of the U.S., so now they are doing a lot and their governments are supporting. So a lot of work is happening in uh, these countries. Probably they are ahead of the U.S. as far as the 5G race is concerned. But the problem is that uh, uh, the the biggest 5G company, uh, Huawei, which is doing so much work in China, is privately held for for right now right so uh, but again these companies have um, p- public partnerships uh, probably through an ETF yeah. you can take advantage of those partnerships now as far as magazines are concerned i wanted to point point out that airline uh, miles are very good way of getting subscription to magazines at times oh, because your airline yeah. miles expire. You don't even remember if you don't use United Miles for two years, they will right. just expire. So if you don't know whether if you're not traveling, if you're not planning to use your miles for travel, or if you do not have enough miles for travel, probably just look up and subscribe to some magazine yeah. and use make use of your... You might airline. even be able to do newspapers through yeah, that newspapers too. Newspapers, even the Wall Street Journal, yeah. you can buy through your airline miles. So that yeah. is a good way to keep your account active and make use of your miles. Right. There's There are a lot of different sources. And I do have to say, for those people who are like, no, you know, you're not going to find anything in these, you know, oh, sure, magazines or newspapers or whatever, go stream the movie Working Girl with Mm -hmm. Melanie Griffith, Harrison Ford. Yes, it's old. It's from the 1980s. Got a whole bunch of Oscar nominations. But in it, Melanie's character um, finds her ideas for M&A. She was not investing, but trying to, you know, merge them together from the newspaper. So she's like cutting out articles about various um, radio personalities actually Mm -hmm. in the Mm -hmm. film. So I really recommend that to, is a uh, kind of a portrayal of what you can do when you're out there looking around for sure. various investing ideas, and especially ones that you know might not be as clear on the surface. Kind of like reading the healthiest store bought veggie burger article, mm-hmm. and then realizing, hey, this could be real popular with you know people wanting to eat much more of this. And how can I invest in 
something like this. So, yeah, you Yeah, can... this is definitely a growing trend for which Beyond Meets success just shows us that so many people are probably they want healthier options and there's yeah. so many vegans uh, in the world now. And uh, Morning Star Burgers because as you mentioned that it's owned by Kellogg's now. Yeah. They their marketing is very good. They are available everywhere. They are available in Whole Foods, they are available in Jewel, they yeah. are available in Target. So very easy to find them too. Okay, I'll be. I'll have to try that one. Mm -hmm. All right. So we gave you a lot of different areas where you could find uh, investing ideas, and some of our favorites. I'm sure some of you have your own, but be sure to use these sources. Yeah, I know it costs money, but you can get some free articles at least yes. for a while, yeah. amongst all of them. And then it doesn't hurt to subscribe to get the information because, after all, these are great great writers and reporters and whatnot bringing it all so sometimes you have to pay to get it yes. <laughs> <laughs> and i do so let's recap the tickers we talked about here so one of those was the five below for the retail side that's kind of a small cap retailer that's hidden and that's f-i-v-e and then we had intuitive surgical on the da vinci system i-s-r-g and then we had the a couple of the ETFs. The space one is UFO. That's yes, easy to remember. Mm -hmm. One of the robotics ones is IRBO. The fintech ETF is FINX. And the 5G is FIVG. And then we had a couple of the, the meatless, I guess. Is that mm -hmm. what they're calling it? It's not really veggie. It's, it is just meatless, yes. right? Okay, meatless. And one of those is Beyond Meat, B-Y-N-D, which is still going strong since it's IPO. It's a little crazy for me here now. I'm I'm on the sidelines on that I one. I wouldn't no buy it. Yeah, it has yeah. gone up too much too soon. <laughs> exactly. So I'm waiting for a pullback on that one. And then Kellogg, which has the Morningstar, is K. So that's another way to play it. And um, is that everything? I think that covers just about everything. So, yeah, this has a, been a good topic because, again, people don't know where to find investment ideas. And I'm going to cover books on another show. So be sure to subscribe so that you can get all of our podcasts here at Zach's as we're bringing you investment ideas. You don't even need to read the magazines or articles, apparently. Mm -hmm. We'll bring some of, for you every week here on all of our podcasts because Nina has a podcast on ETFs, too, that you're going to want to check out. What's it called? ETF Spotlight. Okay, that's easy to remember. So yes. check out the ETF Spotlight, too, to get even more ETF ideas. These are all free, of course. Mm -hmm. And the Market Edge here. And also the Value Investor Podcast, where I bring you value stocks every week. That's also a good one for some investing ideas. But you can get them all on Apple Podcasts. And um, the Market Edge is also on SoundCloud and on Spotify. So get us somewhere. And I'll see you again next week with some more investing ideas. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified I've described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.